Welcome this morning to this podcast, guys. As always, um, myself and Remy would like to welcome you into our home on NarcCon, where we deal with all things in relation to narcissists, how to avoid them, how to understand what's happened and how to heal from them. And just before I get into the video on how to outsmart a narcissist and get your loved one free or back, um, I would like to give a shout out to a local gym, if that's OK. I know it won't mean anything if you're far away from this particular country, but a shout out to Nike Fit, um, where I go to the gym. This is a life transforming experience. And I know any of you that take regular exercise and do weightlifting or anything like that, particularly post narcissistic abuse, it is literally life transforming and keeps you on the good road, on the good journey. And to all the wonderful coaches down there, I would like to say a big thank you on my behalf. So I will be getting into more healing videos um, as we go forward. Um, but for today, let's get into how to outsmart a narcissist. Also, guys, this is going to be um, reflective on the Meghan Markle and Prince Harry series because oftentimes you can see in public figures and in the way they act um, how a story plays out. It's literally like watching a film on narcissists. And again, this is my opinion, merely my opinion, based on experience and education on narcissistic abuse, where I look at these two in particular, in particular Meghan Markle, who I consider because of the behaviours that are out in the public to be very narcissistic or a narcissist indeed. So let's look at what's happening with them. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of vitriol coming back at me with the, these particular videos seem to ignite people who are supporters or I believe they're called the Sussex Squad and I believe there's a lot of organised trolling going on at the moment. So bring it on, bring your opinion on and let's see how we get on with this. Hopefully it'll be of help and support to people who suffer greatly because they see a son, a daughter, a mother, a father, a cousin, whoever, entrapped by a narcissist and fairly oblivious to the manipulations that they're being run through. And even after a number of years are still trapped in the situation and becoming more a scooped out shell of themselves. Let's see how we can help our loved one, because there is a point at which when that person, the target of a narcissist, who is in the relationship, in the devaluation stage, who's going through an awful lot of abuse, sometimes at somewhere like we ourselves, some part of us rebels and we say, no, no more, something's wrong here. And we start to question. And that's the time when we start to look at our families and our supporters and our friends and some of them that we may have gone against because of the narcissistic manipulations. And we begin to miss them. And we begin to realize that they're not all bad. And I would believe that that's what's happening from what's out there in the public arena from news. That's possibly now what's happening with Prince Harry, who may be missing his family, finding it difficult being isolated in a foreign country with few friends, I would imagine, from from what we hear in the news and also probably under financial duress and definitely from a lot of critique coming their way, he must be scratching his head at this stage and saying, how has it all gone so terribly wrong? And what is the common denominator in my life? Because my life before I got married or met this person was nothing like this. It looks like a totally different life, as we all know. The life changing ex experience in the negative context of meeting and staying any length of time with a narcissist. So to start off this in relation to how to outstart a narcissist. The basis of this is that narcissists all follow 
a predictable pattern. And therein lies their weakness because they are predictable. The narcissist also predicates their success on believing that all other human beings are predictable. And therein lies their ability to destroy and take people down. So now that you know what a narcissist is and you're getting the education here, you have the ability to outsmart them because before this, they were one step ahead because you didn't know that you were living with your enemy. They knew because you were always their enemy. You were always someone that they had to take from, not grow with. Take from, utilize, destroy, become regulated by your pain. They knew how you were going to react in specific situations. They knew that they didn't love you and they knew that you were their enemy. Now you know. Now you know that this person is your enemy, not your friend. No matter how much they tell you, I love you, I love you, I love you, and then go and do something that's very abusive. No matter how much they say it, they can say it and sing it until the cows come home. They are not your friend. They are your enemy. That established understanding narcissism and you're on the first step of the ladder to outsmarting one. I often go to warfare and I know there's a great book called The Art of Warfare and there's a lot that a person can learn in reading that book. I haven't read it myself but I will do someday when life gets left less busy. Warfare and warfare tactics are a very good thing to take on board when dealing with a narcissistic individual or an outright narcissist, a person who has narcissistic personality disorder. And indeed, there are great differences between an actual narcissist and the way these days the term is bandied around. Oh, he or she was a narcissist, blah, blah, blah. It's not that simple. Anyone that has been with a narcissist or understands what a narcissist is, understands the complexities of these individuals, the intricacies, the deceit and the complex deceit that you will come up against. So back to warfare. In the days of old, um, if you look at, for instance, the Viking battles and the battles that were fought on fields, you know, with horses and people, People met on a battlefield and they were all, you know, on the one level. One person, one army came from one side and the other army came from the other side. That's the battles of old. Those battles were more or less fought and won by numbers and weaponry, etc. Then came an army, say, like the Vikings, and they came up with a different battle strategy. So what they did and correct me if I'm wrong, was they chose their battleground. They chose their battleground to entrap their enemy. So they chose an advantageous position. For instance, uh, they were going to choose a place that had water or that was that would build a, dig a big hole that was covered up with branches that their enemy would fall into. You get the picture. It wasn't going to be a straightforward battle. And with a narcissist, it is the opposite of straightforward. So what I'm saying to you is, now is the time, if particularly a loved one is entrapped with a narcissist, and we're going to relate this to the royal family in a few minutes, to have a battle strategy and not to do what is expected. Because the enemy that comes to the battlefield prepared to fight a straightforward battle is going to be entrapped because the narcissist has set up traps for you in order to win the battle. The narcissist is basing their success 
on your predictability in that you'll come with your horses and line up and prepare for this straightforward battle where you're going to meet them, you know, in a, in a equal space. And you are going to expect them to meet you the same way that you meet them. Without laboring the point, I know you get it, guys. So anybody that's been with a narcissist, that been through these diabolical silent wars with silent weapons, understands that this is necessary when dealing with this evil mindset. So we're going to deal with the current situation between Meghan Markle, Prince Harry and the royal family. And even if you don't agree with my opinion that Meghan Markle displays all the behaviours of a narcissist, let's just say, for example, you do, because it could be beneficial in your own particular situation in relation to dealing with this type of individual in your own life. So the current situation as it's on the news would be that Princess Kate went through a lot of vitriol, a lot of made up stories, a lot of supposition about, you know, whether she was actually still alive. It went it went that crazy. And there's also a lot on the news in relation to the fact that a lot of this originated in California and that there is a lot of organized and paid for trolls on the internet, which is a very clever way these days of propagandizing your agenda. I suspect if we were in the Second World War and there was a lot of Goebbels type people about, they would use the internet with paid trolls to propagandize their agenda. They're literally, narcissists will use whatever tools are at their hand and they will capitalize, often innovatively capital, capitalize where no one maybe has done this before. But they know, they understand the value of deceit and they understand the value of spreading a smear campaign and the best way to spread a smear campaign these days is to do it on the internet. So I believe the current situation is that Princess Kate, Princess Catherine, has now announced that she unfortunately has a serious illness. And there was a bit of a backup when this happened, even though those crazy stories, you know, kept spewing out in the background the main focus came off her in relation to just trying to destroy her, basically, because it wouldn't have looked good with their, her cancer diagnosis to continue to batter her, at least in full view and in full force. It's still going on in the background. So there was this message, I believe, from... Meghan Markle and Prince Harry of peace, healing and, you know, hoped for privacy for Princess Catherine, which is diabolical, given the fact that I believe and it's on the news that they were behind a lot of the pushing towards these rumours and attacks on her. So I am getting to the point, guys, stick with it. Um, in relation to how to outsmart the narcissist. So that's the state of play at the moment. Now, the norm would be at this stage for say Prince William and Princess Catherine and Prince Charles and Queen, or sorry, King Charles and Queen Camilla, you know, their normal human reaction would be, these two have gone off and have slated the family, have accused the family of being racist, have accused the family of not treating them well when they were in the lap of luxury, when they were in England, etc. And the bad press, you know, berating them and criticising their bad behaviours. So that's the state of play that we have at the moment. And a normal human reaction would be, seriously, you have 
just tried to destroy us. You've tried to destroy our family. You've borne false witness against us. You have taken Prince Harry away from his family. You've turned him against them. You've isolated him from us. You've brought out the monster in him. Sorry, I see a little movement there in the background. <laughs> Remy finds narcissists and talking about them very boring. Okay, so back to the subject matter. So a normal human reaction would be, seriously, you actually think, you know, that it's okay now to suggest coming back and we'll all be friends again. So you've stuck a knife on me. I'm supposed to take the knife out and hand it back and say, oh, would you like me to clean it? And let's go to a party. The narcissist expects, expects that type, the reaction where you are going to say, no way will I have anything ever to do with this individual again. They have shown me that they're my enemy and now it's time to walk away. And in a situation where you have a one-to-one -one with a narcissist or whatever, and you're in a position to do that, obviously that's what you need to do. But when you have the intricacies of a loved one, a member of your family entrapped with a narcissist, this is where you can outsmart a narcissist. And there's a lot riding on this because obviously if you love the person that the narcissist has entrapped, you want to assist their freedom. You do not come onto the battlefield with your row of horses and your army expecting the narcissist or whatever, expecting the battle to go as planned, that you should go up against the narcissist shouting the odds, saying, you know, this is what you've done, that's what you've done, etc. You go crazy and you start to tell everybody what the narcissist has done. No. No. That's what the narcissist expects you to do. And therein lies the success of the trap that they set for you. Instead, instead, you do the exact opposite. You publicly engage, this is what I would suggest for the royal family, that they publicly re-engage with this couple. And I know you'll be going, no, Paula, but this is just what I would think, what I would do in this situation. So I'm not saying it's right, but just listen and see what you think and leave your comments. I would publicly re-engage in a formal manner with this couple. I would re-engage with Harry, who's the loved one who's gone certainly been brainwashed to a certain extent, but is hopefully coming back into some kind of sense of reality at this stage. I would let them know that they're welcome to come and have a visit with the family, to bring the children, because you'd really like to see the children. And I would say nothing negative about the wife, the partner, Meghan Markle. I would let Harry know that they're very welcome to attend. Now, what would probably happen would be you'd also stipulate, obviously, no cameras, etc. Just a private, private meeting with the family. And I would make that public because the narcissist is banking on the royal family doing what what would be the human reaction and saying we don't want anything else to do with you. And then they will continue to down the royal family and say, we have so much love in our hearts. We want the children to see the royal family, but we're so worried about our security here that are in, in the UK that we just can't do this. And we're devastated that the family has ostracized us and is isolating us and is being so cruel to us when they're further persecuting us and we're even worse victims than we ever were before. They're horrible. I know you get it. Instead, the royal family hold out the olive branch, 
negating that particular smear campaign of the narcissist. Now, this puts it up to the narcissist. And uh, the consequences of this for the narcissist are Prince Harry is going, mm, my family's not so bad. I love them. At this stage, I'm really missing them because I've been devalued to such an extent by herself. And I really would love that. I would love to bring my children back and show my dad and show, you know, Princess Catherine and William, oh, just, and my friends, just, it would be wonderful. This is what he will be thinking at this stage. Maybe not consciously, but this is what he'll be feeling. The narcissist is going, uh, 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 uh. How do I keep him still isolated? How do I push the royal family agenda as being horrible people? And how do I get control in this situation? Now, there may be, and usually a narcissist will maneuver themselves when they're faced with a situation into the best situation for themselves. But this will definitely threaten her control. I believe that they probably need money. So she is probably or would probably think in this situation, and this is all probably, this is all, in my opinion, the process a narcissist goes through when a family tries to free their loved one or bring their loved one back towards them. And this is a key time in the battle, the psychological and emotional battle where your loved one is suffering. The family is offering solace and offering reconnection despite what their loved one has done under the influence of the narcissist. The narcissist is threatened, their control is threatened. However, if there's an advantage to the reconnection, which makes it more complicated. And in this case, there is an advantage to Meghan Markle. We're gonna have a look at that in a minute. What this actually does for Harry or would do for Harry should a situation like this occur is that it will allow him to have more clarity around what's actually gone down in the last few years. And it will bring him a little bit more into the sense of himself and the fact that his family is important and he needs them. And it will reflect his old self back to him when, when or if he reconnected more with his family. The complication here is that I believe they need money so for the narcissist, in my opinion, Meghan Markle, going back into the royal family could be turned to her advantage, even though it would threaten her control. She is going to, in my opinion, if this situation occurs, take the hit with Harry in relation to him being a little bit out of her control and back under the family umbrella, so to speak because she feels that she can always control him, that she's had a good control on him for a number of years, and she feels that she can control him through their children. So she would take that hit in order to reconnect with the royal family. I believe she would go back in for the benefit of money, for the residual benefit that she could gain from being back connected with the royal family and she would hope to gain as much information and new content as possible from the re-engagement in the situation and from the public, the public perception of everything being okay. Also, also, 
and this is horrible, so be very, very careful if you have a loved one who has married somebody or who's with them and has children with them. And you're beginning to be able to re-engage with them. They're beginning to reach out to you and be very careful, obviously, not to go against their partner because they're still not at the, the stage where they believe their partner's all bad. They just believe that there's problems in the relationship. So what you're trying to do is reestablish a connection, not go against the partner, but build your loved one up in relation to praise them for the good they do. Try not to harp too much on what they've done in the past. Don't don't go there for now. Let them come to you eventually with an apology for that. But really build on the connection with them, on the good memories you had in the past, etc. Now, what the narcissist will do in this situation, if they feel it's more beneficial, you're outsmarting them, so to speak. You're not reacting the way they expected you to react. And this is a real seriously your family are reconnecting with us you know that's what they'll be thinking in their mind so you have outsmarted them what they will do at this stage is it's a win for you it's a win for the royal family in relation to public relations in relation to bringing harry back into the family and any hope there is for harry being reunited with his family in any kind of a positive way in future years when their relationship with Meghan Markle is over because relationships with narcissists generally will break up at some point. The problem here is the children. Meghan Markle is like the Trojan horse where the children are concerned, bringing the children in and the Trojan horse and having the gates open and coming in with them. Because what she, she, in my opinion, this is just surmising what might happen if this situation were to occur. It hasn't occurred to the best of my knowledge. The narcissist uses the children as tools, particularly with grandparents and extended family, to attach the family to the children. To push the children at the family. Because the narcissist, again, is going back into the prediction of human behavior and believing that once the children are attached to the family, they can manipulate the family through the children. So what the family would have to be very careful in doing is engage with the children, but understand that there's only so much they can do in relation to extending that relationship or protecting the children. What they would need to do and what would be beneficial to do is to establish a relationship with the children, to establish a loving relationship with the children so the children have some point of reference of a different way of life and that will affect them in their upbringing. That does affect children to see a different way and that's how a lot of people don't turn into narcissists because they see an alternative and they choose the alternative. So what the royal family would have to do would be very measured in their communication with this too, because until Harry is away on his own, and even after Harry is away on his own, he'll still be susceptible to the narcissist hoovering. So they have to be very careful. They have to allow no, no photographs. They have to keep things very bland, no information sharing visits with the children, but understand that these children can be taken away from them at any point in time and will be used as weapons against them if they're not careful. In my opinion, that's how you outsmart a narcissist. You understand how they're going to operate and you're a few steps ahead of them at each juncture. The best way you can get your loved one back is to, just to recap, not to react predictably. The narcissist is invested in you cutting off ties from them and the loved one by them going against you and triggering you. You don't fall into that 
hole that they've put on the battlefield for you to fall into, you go around that. You do not go in the predictable direction. You keep as much contact as possible with your loved one. You do not criticize the narcissist to the loved one. You can ask questions, perhaps leading questions, but not with any insinuation of criticism, just curiosity so that your loved one is, oh, I'm not sure why he or she did that. At least it sets the brain off thinking, I wonder why, if they're not wondering already. And the third thing is, you're gathering knowledge on what the narcissist is up to. And you may be able to preempt something like, for instance, say you were thinking of handing over a certain portion of inheritance, you know, to to your extended family or to say three children or four children. You pull back on that with the person who's entrapped by a narcissist. You take measures to protect their future. Because remember, they're not always going to be acting like this. You know from your own experience, I know from my experience, I acted very differently. I was a, a shell of myself and a different person in the relationship with the narcissist and probably made, and definitely made, a good few mistakes, but could have made devastating, life-changing mistakes. So this is a time to be very protective of your loved one, even if they're at a distance. So guys, outsmarting a narcissist is literally doing, not doing what they have set you up to do and is understanding how narcissists operate. They will always try and entrap their victims or their extended, the extended family of their victims. So bearing that in mind, you can be two and three steps ahead of a narcissist and please, Share this information because there are people out there being abused and used by narcissists who have no idea that this is a vile, they call it a personality disorder, at least in the personality disorder being described psychologically, we can predict how they operate. It's a very boring, very army-like way of operating. They all operate in the same manner just with little tweaks and variations as to how they go about that. So we're in a position and we are perfectly imperfect humans. There's nobody saying that we're all great and they're all bad. It's just they like to do bad things a lot of the time, whereas most human beings don't like to do bad things a lot of the time. So Preparation and education and understanding what you're dealing with is the key to a successful outcome with a narcissist. Please share, click, like, subscribe, do anything you can to support the work. I would so and do so appreciate the support that is given to us here on Narcon. For now, bye.